Take your Bible this morning for our scripture reading to Psalm 23, please. The 23rd Psalm. <clears throat> Familiar passage to us this morning. Just six verses. And I think we'll just read this 23rd Psalm in unison this morning. And as we usually do, let's stand together to read the scripture. All of us standing, please, to read God's word. And let's just read the 23rd Psalm together this morning, beginning in verse number one. Ready? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And let's pray. Father, add your blessing, please, to the reading of our scripture here this morning. And Lord, we ask you that you would continue to speak to our hearts and you would bless the special that's about to be sung, that Lord, you continue to prepare us for the truth from your word this morning. 
We thank you so much for the Bible and for preserving your word for us that we hold copies in our hand today. And Lord, I'm praying that each of us would quiet our heart and focus our attention on what you would want to say to each of us today. Bless the special as it's given now in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we bow before you in prayer and we pray, God, that you will minister to our hearts this morning. We thank you, Lord, again for the Bible and particularly, Lord, for this particular psalm we'll look at this morning. And I'm asking you to help us to glean the truth here from this psalm that we'll look at today, that it will be an encouragement, it will be a balm to many who are hurting this morning, and Lord, that we'll rejoice and will revel, will bask in the sunlight of the truth that the Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. So Lord, help me as I bring the truth today and please help the folks as they listen, that your will would be accomplished in each one of our lives this morning, in these next few moments that we have together looking into your word. And I ask for this help in Jesus' name, amen. It is <clears throat> pure speculation to try to figure out when the 23rd Psalm was written by David. Some believe it was written when Saul was chasing him uh, throughout the hills, um, trying to capture the man whom the people were saying had slain his tens of thousands compared to Saul's thousands. And jealousy had captured Saul and he was chasing David down like an enemy. And... I can imagine David sitting in a cave. I can imagine him just looking out the narrow opening of a cave and seeing maybe Saul's soldiers go by with their swords or their shields uh, glistening in the sunlight. 
as it bounces off them. And I could see him thinking that, boy, if I just breathe too loud or if, if we, somebody moves and a rock falls in the wrong direction or a rock moves, they're going to know we're in here and we'll be captured. But maybe about that time and the distance he sees a shepherd leading some sheep. And maybe it reminds him that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Maybe he goes back to those days when he tended his father's sheep. You remember when Samuel came to anoint the next king and, and Jesse had all his sons come out for Samuel to see. And each one, one after another, God said, nope, not him, nope, not him, nope, not him. And finally, remember, Samuel had to say, do you have anybody else? And Jesse said, oh yeah, there's one guy yet. He's out tending sheep. Kind of an afterthought. And there he was out with the sheep and they brought David and he would be anointed to be the next king. So he writes those wonderful words that many have found comfort in through the years. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I, I, I kind of like the way the little girl said it. She said, the Lord is my shepherd. That's all I want. And uh, maybe that's good too, amen? But I want to look at that statement this morning and give you several statements about that statement. Number one, I want you to see this morning, it's a statement of decision. David has made a decision. The Lord is my shepherd. He's saying, God is going to be my shepherd. I think it's a decision you come to in your life where you say, you know what? I've tried other shepherds, but the Lord is going to be my shepherd. I tried the shepherd of psychology or the shepherd of philosophy, but they don't provide the answers for me that I'm looking for. You may have tried uh, the shepherd of a career or the shepherd of uh, popularity or the shepherd of friends and family, but you find out friends and family need a shepherd as bad as you do. And uh, they don't know uh, the direction they're going in their life. And, and so you come to find out that, there's, that, that I'm going to take the Lord as my shepherd because the only contentment that I'll find in life is knowing the Lord as my shepherd. That's where contentment is. That's where satisfaction is. It's not in study. It's not in knowledge. It is not in pleasure. It's not in amassing possessions. It's certainly not in money. It's not in power. It is not in popularity. It is not in having more friends. It's not in gathering awards. It is not in achievements. It is not in doing good. It's not in a career. Man chases all those things. And you know what man ends up saying? I'm not satisfied. Ecclesiastes 6 and verse 7 says, All the labor of man is for his mouth, and yet the appetite is not filled. Man never says, I'm satisfied. Man, it's summed up in what old Mick Jagger sang years ago. I can't get no satisfaction. Huh? Yeah, some of you, boy, you can't quote a Bible verse. You sure remember that, don't you? The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 2.23, All his days are sorrows and travail. Yea, his heart taketh not rest in the night. This also is vanity. All his days are sorrow and his travail grief. His heart doesn't take rest even at night. How many people in America, they're, they're, listen, they're living for fame or they're living for money or they're living for their career. They're living for what they can get. They're living for the possessions. And, and they don't want God. They don't want the shepherd. They're trying all these other shepherds and they have to take something every night just to go to sleep. With God, we're satisfied. There's a word that always goes with those who put their trust in God. You know what it is? Rest. Rest. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, and ye will find rest unto your souls. The 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I won't lack, I won't lack anything. I'm not going to constantly be wanting something. The whole world is, 
Our world, an American world, our America is built on discontent. Don't be. You, you, I know you have this product, but you need the new and improved product. And you, it's always something better, bigger, different, improved that you need to have. So you be discontent with what you do have. Listen to the words that this one fellow wrote. He said it was spring, but it was summer I wanted. The warm days and the great outdoors. It was summer, but it was fall I wanted. The colorful leaves and the cool dry air. It was fall, but it was winter I wanted. The beautiful snow and the joy of the holiday season. It was winter, but it was spring I wanted. The warmth and the blossoming of nature. I was a child, but it was adulthood I wanted. The freedom and the respect. I was 20, but it was 30 I wanted to be. Mature and sophisticated. I was middle-aged, but it was 20 I wanted. The youth and the free spirit. I was retired, but it was middle age I wanted. The presence of mind without any limitations. Then my life was over, and I never got what I wanted. That's the average person living today. Many people never satisfied. Always wanting something else. More toys. More television time for children. A teenager wants more freedom or more popularity. Adults want more possessions or more leisure time. As we get older, we may want more health or more friends or more loyalty from our children. But Paul said, not that I speak in respect of want, Paul said, I've learned that whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I believe the characteristic that ought to characterize God's people, those who say, those of us who've made the decision, the Lord is my shepherd, the characteristic that ought to show in our life is contentment. Satisfaction. While the world says, I can't get any, satisfaction, they ought to look at the Christian and say, what in the world do you have? I don't think we ought to be restless and jealous, always talking about what we don't have. I think we ought to have a spirit, the Bible says, of thankfulness for what we do have. And being grateful for what God has given to us. And that identifies us that we belong to Him. That the Lord is our shepherd. It's a decision that we make. The second thing about the Lord is my shepherd is it's not only a statement of decision, I think it's a statement of submission. You know, it's interesting. David was the shepherd. Now, he's taking the position of a sheep. Different position for him. He's used to being the leader. Now he's saying... I'll be the follower. I'm used to being the shepherd, but now I have to learn to be a sheep. I'm used to being in charge. I'm used to getting my own way. I'm used to deciding what I'm going to do. Trust my own instincts. Trust my own expertise. And now David says, I have to learn to be a sheep. You know, sheep are totally dependent creatures. They cannot swim because the wool weighs them down and their hooves don't act much like flippers. Their teeth are not going to hurt you if they bite. Sheep have no sense of direction. They wander away all the time. They can't clean themselves. They they have no claws to defend themselves. They can't run away from predators. They can't even tell the difference between good food and poisonous food. They'll eat anything. And sheep scare very easily. They're timid. They're easily frightened. When the Bible says, He leadeth me beside the still waters, 
the shepherd has to dam up the brook and stop the water from flowing because as long as the water is moving, the sheep are afraid to drink out of it. So it has to be still water for the sheep to drink. Boy, it sounds a lot like human beings, doesn't it? <laughs> David is to the point where we all need to get. And that is, we need a shepherd. My life is easily upset. I'm easily frightened. I can't keep myself clean. I can't defend myself. I need someone to watch over me. Sometimes we feel overwhelmed or we think about how complicated our life is. How many we get pulled in so many different directions. So many different irons in the fire as we like to say. But sometimes God allows those things to happen so at some point we'll look up to Him and say, Lord, I need a shepherd. I cannot do this. The Lord is my shepherd. It takes submission. It takes humility to admit that. Philip Keller wrote a book about the shepherd's look at the 23rd Psalm. It's a wonderful, wonderful book. In that book, he says that sheep require more attention than any other livestock, that they cannot take care of themselves. He said, unless the shepherd moves the sheep on through the pasture, they'll ruin the pasture. They'll eat every single blade of grass until there's nothing left but barren soil. Sheep are very nearsighted and very stubborn, easily frightened. An entire flock can be frightened by a jackrabbit. They have no means of defense. They're timid, feeble creatures. Their only recourse, if there's trouble, is to run to the shepherd to protect them. They have no homing instincts. A dog, a horse, a cat, a bird will find its way home. Any of you ever had that experience? Hmm? Yeah. But a sheep gets lost, forget it. It's not finding its way home. It will not happen. It's a goner unless somebody rescues it. So the overriding uh, principle here is this. Listen, if the sheep doesn't have a shepherd, there's no hope. It cannot make it without a shepherd. The only reason David can say, I shall not want, is because he said, the Lord is my shepherd. That's the only way he can say, I shall not want. It was a statement of decision. It was a statement of submission. But I want you to notice, third of all this morning, it was also a statement of trust. Trust. When David said, the Lord's my shepherd and I'm just a sheep, He's saying, I'm going to trust the shepherd. I'm going to trust the fact that he, he cares about me, He's concerned about me, and that He'll guide me safely through this thing called life. It's, it's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 that I'll trust in the Lord with all my heart. I'll lean not to my own understanding. In all my ways, I'll acknowledge Him and He will direct my path. Because I don't know the right path to take. I, I, I think it's right, but the Bible says all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to His own way. So when I go to my own way, when I lean to my own understanding, I get lost. I make a mess of things. I need to trust the shepherd. Seek ye... First, the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. We worry about what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? How are we going to be clothed? What's going to happen with this? What's going to go on? And God said, listen, you've got to put me first. 
Oh, I talk to people all the time and they say, man, I just can't get ahead. I just can't get, I got so much to do and we, we can't get, we're behind on the rent and we're behind on the bill and I can't pay the payment and I can't do this and I'm working seven days a week and I don't seem to get ahead. Well, my friend, the problem you're not getting ahead is you're not putting God first. You got to put Him first. He's got to be the shepherd. You have to follow Him in all your ways. Acknowledge Him and let Him direct your path. Until you say the Lord is my shepherd, you will want. You will be in want. Think about how much stress and worry that can eliminate. In fact, when you read the rest of the psalm, you find out that even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't fear any evil. Why? Thou art with me. <laughs> My shepherd's there. My shepherd's taking care of me. I don't have to worry about death. I don't have, in fact, <clears throat> I don't worry about the rod of discipline. I don't worry about the correction of God. I don't worry about the enemies. God prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. I don't worry about my enemies. Isn't that a wonderful thing? God is... Nothing to make me afraid because God will work all things together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. David wrote in Psalm 56, In God I have put my trust, I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. The Lord is my shepherd. When you say that, you find yourself sitting down in quiet pastures with a strong shepherd watching over you. You'll find yourself trusting in God's ability. And that gives you a peace and a contentment. Who do you call your shepherd? Who do you call your shepherd? Jesus said the Good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jeremiah 31 reminds us that God is a shepherd who can go in and rescue us from the jaws of someone who's stronger than you or I. That's my shepherd. He keeps me. He protects me. Takes care of me. Whatever I face. Because he's bigger than anything you or I could ever face. Because He created everything. So He's the author of it all. So He protects us. I'm trusting God to meet my needs. I'm trusting God to take care of me. Just as the sheep trust the shepherd. I admit, I'm a sheep. I'm a sheep. A few weeks ago, before... Resurrection Sunday, before Easter Sunday, we talked about that donkey. The Lord hath need of him. After the service, somebody walked out the door and said, so now I'm a donkey. Hmm? Well, you know what? Now you're a sheep. But the job of the shepherd is to do whatever he has to to have that sheep produce wool. You know, the shepherd goes ahead always. He's... He's thinking ahead for places where his sheep can graze or where they can drink. He constantly moves them to green pastures so they can feed and where they can lie down and be contented. They say contented cows make sweet milk. And I imagine contented sheep would make pretty good wool. And so the same way, what does God say? He goes ahead of us. All the way my Savior leads me. He's going ahead of us. Don't ever get to the point where you're running ahead and you're looking back and saying, you coming God? Then you're in trouble. You, you follow His lead. The shepherd's constantly going ahead. Why? He knows what we need. He knows when we need it. And He's preparing the way for us. God, God doesn't respond to our situations. He knew they were coming before we got to them. 
He's already prepared the answer. He already has the answer before the situation even comes up. That's God. All our anxiety, all of our worry come when we stray away from the shepherd. All of our anxiety, all of our worry comes when we stray away from the shepherd and we're on our own. That's a scary place to be. We resist His plans. We don't follow where He wants to lead us. We think we can find better pastures on our own. We worry when, when He leads us somewhere and we don't think that's where we ought to be. We don't think that's where we ought to go. That's not the pasture we had in mind. And so we want to go somewhere else. The saying, the Lord is my shepherd, is a statement of trust. It, it shows contentment. I'm saying that I'll trust the shepherd. I'll trust my God to know what I need and what I have to have and when I have to have it. I'll just trust a shepherd. You know why? Because I'm a sheep. I need a shepherd. I'll trust Him to nourish me, to protect me, to guard me, to feed me. I'll just be content letting the shepherd be the shepherd. And I'll be the sheep. Contentment is simply when you finally come to the place where you realize the Lord's going to take care of me. He's my shepherd. The sheep don't spend any time worrying about where they're going next. The sheep don't get up in the morning and say, where are we going to eat today? They just follow the shepherd. Just trust Him. So when I say the Lord is my shepherd, I believe David's making a statement of decision. I believe he's making a statement of submission. I believe he makes a statement of trust, but fourthly, I want you to see, I think he's making a statement of relationship. Jesus said in John 10 and verse 27 that he's the good shepherd. He said, and I know my sheep and they follow me. It's a big, the big word there is he's my shepherd. It's not just you this morning saying, I know He's the shepherd. Or He's a shepherd. The point of relationship here is, can you say He's my shepherd? It's personal. It's a personal pronoun. He's intensely and intimately concerned. Maybe David would say he's my personal shepherd. Others may want, but I don't want because I have a shepherd. Others may worry, but I don't worry because the Lord is my shepherd. Others may wander away. Others may go their own way, but I won't do that because the Lord is my shepherd. It's a statement of relationship. I was reading about a Christian drama and it depicts a little boy working at his parents' carpentry shop in Jerusalem. He protests his job because it was to assist in making a cross. The parents insist that he help because Rome has given them a contract for the construction of crosses. And as they go to scene two in this drama, the little boy is weeping. What is wrong, his parents ask. And he responds, he said, I went to the marketplace today and I saw Jesus of Nazareth, the man we love and the man we go listen to. And he was carrying our cross. They took him to Golgotha and I watched as they nailed him to my cross. 
And the parents said, no, son, no, that wasn't our cross. There's other people in Jerusalem that build crosses. We're not the only ones. That wasn't our cross. And the little boy says, yes, it was. When you weren't looking, he said, I carved my name in the cross we were making. And when Jesus was carrying his cross, he stumbled and fell right beside me. And I looked and my name was on the cross. I got news for you. My name was on his cross too. And so was yours. So was yours. He died in our place. Jesus went to the cross and paid for our sin debt. Christ died for us. But take us out of there and put your name in there. Put me in there. Say, Christ died for me. Make it personal. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2 with me for a moment, would you please? 1 Peter chapter 2 in the New Testament. First Peter 2. One of the most amazing soul winning visits I had one day. Brother Yoder, I was out knocking on doors and I knocked on this fellow's door and I could see in the window. It was a warm day and, the, and I looked in the window and the guy was sitting at his table. And he came and answered the door and I told him who I was, what I was doing. He goes, I can't believe you came by. He said, I was just reading my Bible. And he said, come on in. I went in and his Bible was open on the kitchen table. And he sat down and he said, I just want you, I want you to explain this verse, these verses to me. And it was 1 Peter 2, 24 and 25. And the Bible says this, Who his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as... Sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. And he asked me, what does that verse mean? Huh. Boy, that was easy. The man got saved that day. But listen, when you realize Jesus died for your sins, He bore your sins in His body on the tree. He suffered in your place. He died for you. He was buried and He rose again for you. Now He's able to save you from your sin. And when you trust Him as your Savior, you're returning to the shepherd of your soul. He's the one that will watch over you. You know it makes all the difference when you know the shepherd? It makes all the difference when you know the shepherd. A well-known actor came to town. And to the delight of everyone in town, he was giving public recitations of famous pieces of literature. And among one of the recitations that he was going to give was the 23rd Psalm. And as he stood up that night for the crowd that was gathered there, he gave a perfect, flawless presentation of the 23rd Psalm. However, at that presentation that night, there was also an old saint of God. He'd been known to recite the 23rd Psalm at times. And after quite a bit of prodding from the people, they coaxed him into giving his version of the 23rd Psalm. He went up on the stage and all the eyes were fixed on him. With deep feeling and emotion, he began to say, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. On and on he continued, emphasizing each personal pronoun has his own. 
until he finished with surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As he sat down, everybody in the crowd was visibly moved, including the actor. Without hesitation, the actor stood up and he addressed the people and he said, I understand something, folks. I know the psalm, but that man knows the shepherd. It makes all the difference in the world when you know the shepherd. Is the Lord your shepherd? Can you say with David, the Lord is my shepherd? That's a statement of decision. It's a statement of submission. It's a statement of trust. It's a statement of relationship. That you know Jesus Christ is your Savior. That He died on the cross for you. When you trust Him as your Savior, you're returned to the shepherd of your soul. Thank God. The Lord is my shepherd. Let's pray, shall we? Father, take the truth this morning. Thank You for the 23rd Psalm. Thank You, Lord, for the wonderful truth that You had David pen here. Oh, those words. We need them today. People are struggling at home. They're struggling in their marriage. Single moms or dads struggling with rearing their children. They need to hear, the Lord is my shepherd. People in this room this morning facing health difficulties. Going through cancer treatments. Healing from surgeries. They need to hear the Lord is my shepherd. We need you, Lord. We need the Lord to be our shepherd. I pray that each of us would make it very personal today. And just surely as David was going through that countryside being chased by Saul, not sure where to go next, not sure where to turn next, I'm sure. What a great comfort it was when he could write down the words, the Lord is my shepherd. I pray you'll use those words. Use that truth to be a comfort and an encouragement and a help to your sheep that are here this morning. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. I'll finish praying in just a moment. I wonder how many folks here this morning would say, Pastor, the Lord, I can say with confidence, the Lord is my shepherd. It's a time when I know that I was a sinner who needed a Savior and that Jesus was the Savior I needed. And I knew that my name was on His cross. He died for me. There's a time in my life when I've trusted Him as my Savior. I've asked Him to forgive my sin. I've received His gift of eternal life. Pastor, I know that I'm saved. I can say with confidence this morning, the Lord is my shepherd. Pastor, here's my hand as a testimony. Would you slip it up for a moment that I may see it? Say, that's me, Pastor. Amen. You may put it down. You're here today and would say, Pastor, I don't know for sure that the Lord is my shepherd. I can't say for sure the Lord is my Savior. Would you let me pray for you? I'll not embarrass you. I'll not call you out. I'll just pray for you. Would you slip your hand up right now and say, Pastor, pray for me this morning? I'm not sure about that. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your honesty with God this morning. I wonder how many believers here today would say, Pastor, God spoke to my heart today. 
I needed to be reminded the Lord is my shepherd. I need to remind myself of that over and over again that the Lord is my shepherd. I need to be submissive to that. I need to be trusting in that. I'm so thankful that He's my shepherd. I just pray for me that I'll be a sheep and I'll let Him be the shepherd. I wonder how many people this morning can say, Preacher, the Spirit of God spoke to my heart today. I needed that message. Pray for me. Will you slip your hand up? Amen. Amen. God bless you this morning. You may put them down. In a moment, I'll finish praying and we'll have our invitation. Listen very carefully. If you slipped your hand up today and you said, you know, I don't know for sure. If I died, I'd go to heaven. In a moment when I'm done praying, we'll all stand to our feet. The pianist will begin to play. Bob will sing an invitation hymn. Christians will be coming forward. They'll, they're going to kneel at the altar. They're going to pray. They're just going to bow as sheep before the shepherd and say, lead me and guide me and take care of me. You be the shepherd, I'll be the sheep. When they come and they slip from their seat, would you slip out of your seat and come? Let me meet you right here at the front. We'll have someone take you privately aside, take a Bible. We have people who have been trained. They'll take a Bible. They'll show you how you can know for sure that Jesus is your shepherd, that he can be your Savior. Oh, walk out the door in a few minutes knowing the shepherd knowing you have eternal life. Don't leave without Him today. Heavenly Father, thank You for speaking to hearts today. Lord, I'm asking You now that You would have Your way and Your will in each heart and life during this invitation time. Lord, I pray that each one would do exactly what You're telling them to do in their heart. Help this, this one, these, these two that lift their hand and say they're not sure. Oh, Lord, I pray they'd come today. They'd receive the Lord Jesus. And they would walk out today and be able to say from their heart, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. May your will be done in each heart and life now in these next few moments. And I'll thank you for it.